Hello, 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 my fellow Vermonters. My name is Chris Erickson. I would like you to give me a write in vote for United States Senator. Bernie Sanders is on the ballot. He's 83 years old. We have no idea if he'll live till 89. He might. He was bouncing around the basketball court with kids this summer. So he might do fine. But it's always important when a United States Senator is 83 years old, he is older than Joe Biden, to consider whether or not we should be sending him to the beach with Joe, or is it time for someone new? So I'm asking you to think about giving me a write-in vote. Again, my name is Chris Erickson, and I'm here today to discuss Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All Act. He introduced it in 2017, seven years ago, it did not pass. He has introduced it again this year in the United States Senate, S-1655. So first I'm gonna tell you what the bill's about, and then I'll tell you what I would do differently. If you elect me, I'll keep the name Medicare for All. Everybody loves the name Medicare for All, but I would fund it differently because I feel that the reason Bernie Sanders can't get this passed is how he's thinking about funding it. And that's what makes people furious. And a few other things make people furious about the bill, but still, it's a good idea. Let's go with it. Let's just make some changes if you vote for me, all right? So let's see what Bernie has here. S-1655 in the United States Senate, Medicare for All Act, Medicare for All. Think about that, health insurance for everybody. This bill establishes a national health insurance program that is administered by the Department of Health and Human Services. Among other requirements, the program must, number one, cover all U.S. residents. This makes Republicans furious because a United States resident is not the same thing as a United States citizen. Anyone residing in the United States includes 12 million or more illegal migrants. So this bill would cover all the illegal migrants. All right, now number two, the bill provides for automatic enrollment of individuals upon birth or residency in the United States. And number three, cover items and services that are medically necessary or appropriate to maintain health or to, to diagnose, treat, or rehabilitate a health condition, including hospital services, prescription drugs. Now that's a huge cost mental health and substance abuse treatment, dental and vision services, home and community-based long-term care, gender-affirming care, and reproductive care, including contraception and abortions. The bill prohibits cost sharing, deductibles, co-insurance, co-payments, and other charges for covered services, with the exception of prescription drugs. Additionally, private health insurers and employers may only offer coverage that is supplemental to and not duplicated of, duplicative of benefits provided under the program. This also makes people furious because there are a lot of very successful countries in Europe who have a hybrid program. A hybrid program means these countries in Europe say, if you want to go to a government health care clinic, if you want to go to a government hospital, you can. But if you don't want to, you can buy private insurance. But Bernie's bill restricts your right to buy private insurance. That really gets the Republicans upset. The bill goes on to say, health insurance exchanges and specified federal health programs terminate upon program implementation. However, the program does not affect coverage provided through the Department of Veterans Affairs, TRICARE, or the Indian Health Ther Service. Additionally, state Medicaid programs must cover certain institutional long-term care services. The bill also establishes a series of implementing provisions relating to health care provider 
participation, um, Health and Human Services Administration, payments and costs, including the requirement that Health and Human Services negotiate prices for prescription drugs and establish a formulary. That's another point I have a huge dispute with. I do not believe we need to negotiate prices. I absolutely have a way to avoid negotiating prices. And I'll tell you how I'm going to do that if you vote for me. Now, the bill goes on to say individuals who are age 18 or younger may enroll in the program starting one year after enactment of this bill. Other individuals may buy into a transitional plan or an expanded Medicare program at this time, depending on age. This bill's program must be fully implemented four years after enactment. And that's it, that's all it says. He has 14 co-sponsors. There's, there's 100 United States senators. So there's 14 co-sponsors. But again, there are a lot of objections to this bill. Now, we need to really understand what Bernie's bill is. People who are on Medicaid, are too low income for Obamacare. So you've got these different levels of payments into different programs right now. And Medicare for All would eliminate those programs. Medicare for All would eliminate the Medicaid, the Obamacare. Um, Medicaid is for the low income people. Obamacare is for the middle income people. And then if you're rich, you get private health insurance. You say the heck with Obamacare, you get private health insurance. And then there's Medicare for persons living with a disability and for senior citizens. So there's all these different programs now. And what Bernie Sanders wants to do is just get rid of them all and have one program. Now, the problem is currently right now what Bernie is complaining about is Medicare does not cover eye exams. Medicare doesn't cover long-term care, cosmetic surgery, massage therapy, routine physical exams, hearing aids, dental care, heart valves, organ transplants, cancer treatments. So Bernie wants Medicare for all to pay for all of these things. Now the question is, how is he going to pay for it? And why can't this bill pass? The bill can't pass for two, two big reasons. First of all, that it the Republicans are opposed to the bill covering millions and millions and millions of illegal migrants who are residing in the United States of America. So they are broadly determined to be U.S. residents. If you're residing here, even if you're illegal, you are a United States resident because you're residing here. Okay, so, so this really upsets the Republicans that Bernie Sanders wants to find people who committed a crime, broke into our country, committed the crime of breaking into our country illegally, and then Bernie Sanders wants to reward them with Medicare. All right, now another thing that a lot of people don't like is the lack of choice. People would prefer a European program, which Bernie doesn't tell you about. He says, oh, they all have you know, these single payer plans. Well, that's not true. If you do your research on the internet, you'll find that all those European countries, the most successful, successful ones do not have a single payer plan. They have a hybrid plan. They have a plan that says, if you want to go to the government clinic, if you want to go to the government hospital, fine, go. But if you don't want to, you can buy private health insurance. People want choice. The other big issue that keeps this bill from ever getting passed is how is it going to be funded? So I'm going to take a moment here and flip my internet page, scroll to the next page, and I'm going to tell you how Bernie plans on funding it. And then I'm going to tell you how you can change the funding for the bill. You can keep the name of the bill, Medicare for All, 
but you can entirely change the funding by voting for me because I have an entirely different plan to fund the bill. So first, let me take a break here, change the internet page, and I'll tell you how Bernie plans on funding it, which isn't working and will never pass. Hold on a second. Let's see. Okay, again, I'm Chris Erickson, and I want you to give me a write-in vote for United States Senator. And what I'm discussing today is Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. Now, I've looked up a bunch of ways he plans on paying for it. And since so many people object to all the ways he wants to pay for it, he hasn't been able to get this bill passed. He introduced it in 2017, seven years ago. He couldn't get it passed then, and I don't think he can get it passed now. So I think it's time for someone new to go to the United States Senate with a new plan. Now, I've looked up Bernie's payment plans, and they include taxing Wall Street corporations. Of course, tax the heck out of Wall Street corporations. That's one of Bernie Sanders' favorite plans, to pay for Medicare for all. Tax high-income people. Tax them more. Another one of Bernie Sanders' favorite plans to pay for Medicare for all. Raise the state taxes. Another of Bernie Sanders' plans to pay for Medicare for all. Just raise those estate taxes. Another one of his favorite plans is to limit tax breaks for rich people. Rich people have all kinds of tax breaks. Let's wipe those off the books. And then he wants to require employers to pay a payroll tax. Oops. People don't like that. So these are the ways that Bernie Sanders wants to pay for Medicare for all. Tax Wall Street corporations, tax high income earners, raise estate taxes, limit tax breaks for the rich, and require employers to pay a payroll tax. Now, all of these ideas have not passed. The bill hasn't passed. Bernie's been talking about this bill for years. It hasn't passed. I'm going to tell you how we can keep the same nice friendly name of the bill, Medicare for All, but my plan is to have a hybrid plan like many successful European countries that Bernie would never tells you about, the hybrid plan being, if you want to pay for private insurance, you go ahead. If you want to pay for a private doctor or, or a private hospital, go ahead. But otherwise, you get the government clinic, the government doctors, and the government hospital. Now, how am I going to pay for my plan? I'm not going to tax you. No new taxes. So this is the really important part of my plan You've got to listen up, listen to me, no new taxes. I will tell you how I'm going to pay for this in detail. And trust me on this one. Hold on a second here. Be right back. Hello again, I'm Chris Erickson. I want you to give me a write-in vote for United States Senator. Now, as you know by now, Iran and Israel are having a huge conflict. And so any bright ideas about reducing the budget to the Defense Department won't work. Um, people just won't vote for reducing the budget for defense spending right now. So I thought, okay, I need someplace else to get some money. And if you vote for me for United States Senator and send me down to the United States Congress, you know, all they do in the House and Senate is argue, argue, argue. It just goes on and on and on. And we know that for a fact about Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. He first introduced it in 2017. It didn't get anywhere. He introduced it again this spring. It hasn't gotten anywhere. And the problem is funding. Bernie just talks about taxing a little here and taxing a whole lot there, and let's go gouge the rich in Wall Street. And people aren't going to agree to that because half of the U.S. Congress, House and Senate are Republicans, and the other half are Democrats, a few independents, and they can't get anything done. 
Okay, so I need a different plan. I promised you a new plan to fund Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill without raising your taxes. So where do I go? I go to the United States Treasury. That's where money comes from. They just print it up, okay? But how do they get away with that? Let me explain that to you. Let's go to the United States Treasury online and learn about how do they make all this money? How do they invent it and spread it around like manure and make the fields grow? Let's just have a look at this real quick. I'll be right back. Now I'm looking at my computer on the internet, uh, home.treasury.gov, uh, the role of the treasury. The United States Department of Treasury's mission is to maintain a strong economy and create economic and job opportunities by promoting the conditions that enable economic growth and stability at home and abroad strengthen national security by combating threats and protecting the integrity of the financial system and manage the United States government's finances and resources effectively. Well, so these people print up money and spread it around in order to maintain their goals. So let's have a closer look at the US Treasury. Now, what we can learn is that the government trust funds, there are government trust funds established, and these are designated for specific purposes and programs like Social Security, Medicare, highways, maintaining the highways, Federal Housing Authority, and the government spends more on interest than on budget items like Medicaid, SNAP, that's the uh, food assistance, uh, veterans and health care. Why on earth does the federal government spend more on, money on interest payments than on all the budget items? Well, Janet Yellen is in charge and she thinks it's a fine idea. Now, the United States Department of Treasury issues federal bonds, which are sold at auction. And you can check this out at home.treasury.gov. The sale of treasury securities falls under 31 United States Code, Subtitle Three: Financial Management and the Government Securities Act, Title 15 United States Code, Chapter 28. So you can see that Janet Yellen, who is the Secretary of the Treasury, thinks it's perfectly okay for the United States to be in debt. Why? Why, why does she think that? Let's, let's find out. Okay, now the Federal Reserve controls money policy. They buy and sell United States Treasury bonds in the open market. They make loans to commercial banks at a set interest rate called the discount rate. Now, federalreserve.gov, who buys the United States Treasury bonds? This is this is where we get into financial debt. We issue a bond and we say, if you give us a trillion dollars here or a trillion dollars there or whatever, then we'll pay you back with interest. Let's say it's only a few hundred million. If, you, if we want to borrow a few hundred million dollars, then we say to people, well, we'll pay you back with interest. So it's worth it to you to loan us the money. So federalreserve.gov, who buys the U.S. Treasury bonds? China and Japan hold a huge amount of U.S. public debt. When they mean U.S. public debt, they mean we said to them, we want to borrow $100 million and we'll pay you back with interest. So that's U.S. public debt. And this is issued in bonds. Also, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Ireland, Luxembourg, Canada, they're all buying U.S. bonds. And when foreign investors buy our bonds, we have to pay them back with 
interest. It's like a worldwide pawn shop, sort of. Okay, so so this is what Janet Yellen's up to. So if you vote for me as a write-in candidate for United States Senator, I'll go on down there to Washington, D.C. I'll sit there in my office in the U.S. Senate, and I'll call up Janet Yellen, and I'll say, well, we need some money for the Medicare for All bill, and we're not going to get anywhere with passing uh, more taxes. More taxes will not be tolerated. So I want Janet Yellen to give us the money. How can she do that? She can issue bonds. How many bonds do we need? We need a whole lot of them. Uh, let me see how many bonds we need. Because health care costs have been driven up. Health care costs now are somewhere around projected to be $4 trillion. How did they get to be $4 trillion? There's insurance, there's drug overdoses, there's gun injuries. There's 27 million Americans who don't have health care but show up in the emergency ward. Now, abolishing the right to buy private health insurance is un-American. It's not a free market society, it's not capitalism, and it's dictatorial. So that part of U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill just has to be stricken out. We need a hybrid plan where if you want to go to a private hospital, if you want to see a private doctor, you can. But for everyone else, it needs to be funded by the government. And we can fund health care for all by the government by issuing bonds. The, the U.S. Treasury would have to issue the bonds. Now, I also have a plan for lowering the price of prescription drugs. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, again, Secretary of the Treasury is Janet Yellen. So you vote for me as a write-in candidate for U.S. Senator. I go down there to the U.S. Capitol and sit in my office and call up Janet Yellen and say, I want you to issue bonds for the amount of $4 trillion. And she'll be issuing these at monthly online auctions held by the United States Treasury. The maximum amount that she can issue a bond for is $10 million. So she would have to sell 400,000 treasury bonds to make $4 trillion. Let's go over that again. Our projected healthcare expenses are $4 trillion a year, a year. And with Bernie Sanders bill, Medicare for all, that includes the illegal aliens, and the number of illegal aliens is always an arguing point. There's 25 million, maybe. There's 15 million, maybe. There's a whole bunch of them. So what we're projecting is with Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, a, a bill of $4 trillion for health care. Now, other people will say it's really $4.7 trillion or $4.8 trillion. But what I'm saying is I would change Bernie Sanders' Medicare we all plan to a hybrid pan, plan so we can reduce almost a trillion, at least 0.8 or 0.7 trillion. We'll reduce that because those people will be buying private health insurance and going to private doctors. So what I need to call Janet Yellen up to say to her when you vote for me for U.S. Senator is, I understand, I have read the, you know, the information on the website. I understand that the maximum amount she can issue in a bond is 10 million and she needs to sell 400,000 treasury bonds to make $4 trillion. Now, again, the investors would most likely in include people from China, Japan, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Ireland, Luxembourg and Canada. And you've got to understand that the limit to the amount of debt America can take on is only limited by the amount investors are willing to pay. So we say to investors, lend me 10 million bucks and we'll pay you back with interest. The United States can go in debt as much as we can find investors 
willing to take us on that deal. You lend me 10 million, we'll pay 10 million back plus interest. As many investors as we can find, Janet Yellen can sell these treasury bonds. Okay, now why is the world interested in this? Why would they buy these bonds? Because we can create more jobs with healthcare. The more people have health care, the more they can get up and go to work, whether they work the first shift, the second shift, the sh third shift, whether they work all two jobs, whatever. The more people who have health insurance, the more people will go to work and pay regular taxes. Remember, I promised you no new taxes, no new taxes. This is just going to be people going to work because they feel good, because they've got health care. Because in Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, he's covering dental care. He's covering eyeglasses. He's making it so people can go to work. Eyeglasses are so important. I remember when I was a kid, I was not doing well in school. And finally, in fourth grade, I got an eye exam and they said, she can't see. <laughs> Give her some eyeglasses. Okay. Well, how many people are struggling like that? And, and dental care, if you don't get dental care, an infection can back up to your brain. You can end up dead. Okay. So we need dental care. We need vision care. We need all of the things that Bernie Sanders wants to add to the Medicare for all bill. We really need those things, okay? And the more people who have healthcare, the more people will work, they will. So this will stimulate the economy. There is nothing more important to stimulate the economy and get more people working and more people paying regular taxes without raising any taxes more people will pay regular taxes and go to work if they have health care. So that's my plan. And I want to talk to you for a minute about dissatisfaction with, with political candidates right now. I saw in the news yesterday, Bernie Sanders is out there with AOC and they're they're going to different states to campaign for Kamala Harris. So you've been wondering where Bernie Sanders is this past month. He hasn't been in Vermont. He's been out campaigning for Kamala Harris. And the most interesting thing that it says in the news is Bernie's telling people to ignore the fact that she's genocidal. Genocidal. She and Joe Biden have paid Israel billions and billions of billions of dollars and let them get away with killing innocent civilians. Now, th this has always fascinated me. Many years ago, I had a different type of ancestry DNA test. There's two types of ancestry DNA test. One type tells you where all your people are from, what country they're from. A different type of DNA test tells you what your Y chromosome or if you for men, Y chromosome for men or mitochondrial DNA for women is. Now the Y chromosome for men, that's how they do these paternity tests and they can pin the tail on the donkey real quick because if a man has the same Y chromosome as a, a boy, you darn right he's the father. And for women, it goes mother to daughter, mother to daughter. So looking at the ancestral DNA line um, and looking at my mother and her mother and her mother, it came up with a, a, a J1 for J1 subclade haplogroup, whatever. Now there's three places in the world that, that these could be from. It could be from the Tyree Ford up in Lebanon, uh, Tyree Ford in Norway, or the I I island of Tyree off the west coast of Scotland, or Tyree, Lebanon. Now, I, I have wondered and wondered about this. Are my 
mitochondrial DNA, mother to daughter, mother to daughter, ancestors, are they from Lebanon? Are they from an island off of Scotland or from a Tyree Ford in Norway? Well, most likely Tyree Ford, Norway, but there's still the possibility that it's Lebanon. That's just a possibility. So that got me interested in Tyree, Lebanon when I was doing my research. And what's happening in Tyree, Lebanon? Well, the Israelis are bombing it. So I, I really got interested in this whole issue of genocide. Now, whether it's President, former President Trump or current Vice President Kamala Harris, they're both going to give billions and billions of more dollars to Israel to bomb innocent people. So we need a candidate who's not genocidal. There's Jill Stein, but there's issues I don't agree with her on, on the Green New Deal, because the Green New Deal is not green. It depends on slave labor in the Congo and China. So I don't like the Green New Deal. So I, I found another candidate, this fellow from Minnesota named Dennis Schuler, and he's had problems similar to Jill Stein of the Green Party. The Democrats have been filing lawsuits and trying to get Jill Stein of the Green Party kicked off the ballot, but for the most part, she succeeded. Now, they also tried to get rid of the Marijuana Legal Now Party in Minnesota. They filed in May in before the Supreme Court in Minnesota, and unfortunately, they won. So the Marijuana Legal Now Party was a major political party in Minnesota. They have been kicked off the ballot. And Dennis Schuler, the presidential candidate, is now running as a write-in candidate. And he sent me two clips yesterday. I'm going to try to edit them in here for you. I'll see if I can edit them in. And with his permission, of course. Now, remember, I'm a write-in candidate for United States Senator. And it's really important because Bernie Sanders has never gotten his marijuana bill passed. I'll get it passed. Bernie Sanders has never gotten the Medicare for All bill passed because he's relying on new taxes. And I'm saying, we don't need new taxes. I'll get it passed. So I want you to give me a write-in vote for United States Senator and hold on for a minute here. We'll see if I can edit in Dennis Schuler. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Chris Erickson. You can find me at chriserickson.com. That's Chris, there's no H, it's C-R-I-S. Erickson has no K, E-R-I-C-S-O-N, chriserickson.com, or V-T, V for Vermont, V T. 2024.com vt2024.com that's 2024 2024.com vt2024.com all right so bye bye see you again see you again and i hope you get the candidate you want elected but i hope that's me have a good day Dennis Schuler, uh, candidate for U.S. President with the Legal Marijuana Now Party, denied access to the presidential ballot in Minnesota. And uh, if you're tired of that like me, you don't want to be part of one of the other parties, register to vote. Contact us because it's time to vote right in. Go to VoteWriteIn.com, become a candidate, become a voter, and let's shake it up in 2024. VoteWriteIn.com. Dennis Schuler. No one wins by giving up. This much we know. This is your time to make your mark. Let them know your name. Let them know what you stand for. We are advancing. We're storming the castle. And if anything gets in our way, we're tearing apart and we're going to go through it. You need to lead the team. They're counting on you. Because when that lightning comes, I want you to hold on to it and never let go. I am not leaving until you can stand on your own. And you're going to remember what I told you. You are good enough. And you're going to keep that jar as a remembrance of what I said. <laughs>